morning, everyone. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Oxen for the invitation and, of course, uh, the USA Project Wildlife for uh, sponsoring my channel. Okay, so that's the title of my talk, the Locally Managed Marine Protected Areas and the Coral Reef Fisheries Management of the Philippines. Uh, just a brief background, uh, this is the map of the Philippines, which shows that uh, the Philippines is actually more water than land. So I think it is, can be better described as like uh, the Philippines as a body of water with over 7,000 uh, islands in which first on it. <laughs> so yeah, that's the, the, the latest uh, inventory of uh, the Nami. We have now 7,641 islands, which used to be just 7,107. And then uh, about uh, captured fisheries in the Philippines, it's uh, generally divided into small scale and <coughs> large scale or commercial fishers. So basically, it's based on the on the large on the size of the boats used uh, for the small scale fishers fishery sector. Uh, they use boats of less than three gross tons. And then in, in the Philippines, also we have uh, municipal waters, uh, which is the area from the shore up to 15 kilometers seaward. And uh, based on the on the law, uh, commercial fishers are strictly prohibited to fish within the municipal waters, although it is very rampant the illegal uh, intrusion of commercial fishers in the country. And then for just a brief background about uh, marine protected area, uh, it is defined as the, a generic term for a defined area of the sea established in order to conserve and protect a part of the entire uh, enclosed environment. Uh, and then uh, we have two major types of marine protected areas in the country. We have the National Managed MPAs, which was established uh, based on the NIPAS law. And then we have the locally managed marine protected areas. They are usually managed, uh, co-managed by the local government units and the com local community. And then uh, the Philippines has the, the, the most uh, number of MPAs in, in, in the world. Uh, so 2014, we have uh, around 1,800 uh, marine protected areas in the, in the Philippines. Although most of these are actually small. In fact, uh, there is a question is, as to whether how effective these MPAs are in terms of managing the fisheries, the, the coral reef fisheries or small scale fisheries in general. And by the way, these MPAs, locally managed MPAs, is, this is, these are managed by, by the local government unit. Uh, they are, they are actually entirely within the municipal waters, which is the 15 kilometer area from the shore. And then uh, what we use in, in this study is that uh, we collected the data from over uh, 50 uh, coastal municipalities and cities in the country. Uh, and then uh, we collected uh, fish data, uh, focusing on the commonly targeted uh, fish families only. Uh, we did fish resource census. Uh, in each municipality, we, we surveyed four to the transects, and then half of which uh, were from the unique marine protected areas, and the other half were outside the marine protected areas. And then uh, we also collected uh, survey interview, interview sur we also conducted interview surveys, no? uh, the one on one interviews with the fishers, and also we conducted uh, focus group discussions. So we, in, in one municipality, we we surveyed uh, uh, about six six barangays, six barangays in each uh, municipality, uh, and then for each barangay, uh, we interviewed about uh, thirty fishers, and then the interviews were conducted by also by the local uh, local interviewers, which we train uh, whenever we go to the sites. And then uh, for the for the first uh, part of the. I mean, the, the first study that I'd like to show you is, is uh, the status of small-scale fisheries in the country, uh, which we, we used using the, the locally developed uh, tool, fish tool, uh, the bioeconomic tool model. And then we have already published that uh, in 2014. And then this is just meant to show the, the, the summary of the, the different characteristics of small scale fisheries in the different uh, communities. Sorry, it's the people is very small, but these are the, the averages of the values 
for example, of the size of the municipal waters in the country is roughly only about 3% uh, of the entire municipal waters. And uh, uh, the law actually encourages each municipality to protect at least 15% of the, of the municipal waters. And then in terms of boat ownership, uh, most of the fishers have motorized boats. And then in terms of gear use, uh, the gear nets and token lines are the most commonly used in gears. And then it, it, this is in terms of uh, dominant cash of the, of the fishers. As you notice, uh, the reef fishes constitute only about roughly about 20% of the of the catch. Uh, most of the fishers, about 50% of them are catching pelagic such as tuna, sardines, and, and uh, mackerels, the lumar. And then this is the, the different uh, catch uh, classified by family. These are the coral reef fishes. And then, uh, as I said, using this tool, which uh, was developed by the Marine Science Institute, uh, the fish the results showed that about 68% of the coastal fisheries in the country are unsustainable or are overfished already. And then, look, in order to, because this is a modeling uh, tool, and then in order to, to make the fisheries sustainable, we have two options. One is, of course, to, to increase the size of the MPEs, and then the other one is to reduce fishing effort. But look at the figures. Uh, in order to do that, we have to protect about 58% of the municipal waters, about half of the municipal waters should be protected before the fishers become sustainable. Or we have to reduce the number of fishers based on the number of fishers, but also half of the current fishers. So considering the millions, about two million small scale fishers in the country, it is very difficult to do, especially uh, with, the lack of, with the lack of alternative uh, livelihood options for the fishers in many in many uh, areas in the country. And then we have also uh, to present another study which we did the coral reef fisheries and marine protected areas in the country. Uh, we have also published this in, in, in regional science, in marine science, and the one more recent in the <coughs> ocean and coastal management just this year. So this is, I'd like to go directly to the results since we don't have uh, much time. Uh, in, in this paper, we compared the fish assemblages between inside and outside the marine protected areas. So overall, uh, we see a, a better condition of reef fishes inside marine protected areas than outside. Uh, so for example, in this first uh, figure here, all families are based on the different families. The black ones are, are abundance, is abundance inside marine protected areas. So they are consistently uh, significantly higher inside marine protected areas than outside. And then this is uh, some of the diversity indices also better inside marine protected areas than outside. And then we have also uh, grouped the fish in terms of size. Uh, this is small and then medium and large. Large is about uh, greater than 25 centimeters total length. So if you notice for the smaller size uh, fish, the difference is not really, uh, it's, not, uh, it's actually almost the same. In fact, some, some, uh, in some families, Inside, outside marine protected areas have actually uh, more fish than, than outside, than inside. But look at the larger, the large uh, fish consistently uh, inside marine protected areas have, have more abundant uh, fish inside the marine protected areas. And maybe because uh, fish, some fish are just uh, stay or, or very territorial that they stay within the marine protected area where they are safer. But that's in terms of abundance. But how about in terms of, of biomass? So in this paper, uh, we use this uh, biomass level of McLanahan et al. Uh, this is a, a modified uh, maximum sustainable yield because this is a multi-species and multi-gear fishery. Because uh, traditionally, maximum sustainable yield is used for single uh, species only, just like the tuna or sardines, etc. For these three fishes, uh, this is the, the proposed uh, thresholds. For example, if the biomass is more than more than 50% of the unfished biomass, it can still be considered as above BMMSY for likely exploited 
and then if it is between 25 percent, between 25 percent uh, to 50 percent, it is within BMM, BMMSI or fully exploited, and then if it is below 25 percent, it is over exploited. Now, since in the Philippines we don't have really much uh, baseline data as to what is the fish biomass of the pristine or unfished uh, coral reefs in the country, so what we did is we used the, the Tumbataha Reef National Marine Park, uh, probably the most protected uh, marine, marine protected area in the country. So we used, uh, we used this uh, fish biomass here as our proxy for unfished biomass, although we know that there are some already there some levels of exploitation take place in Tubata. So considering the target fish only, uh, this is the biomass in Tubata, about 51.1 metric ton per square kilometer. Although actually the total fish biomass from the data that we use uh, reached to 110, 110 metric ton per square kilometer total biomass. And according to studies, uh, the, the, the biomass of pristine coral reefs in in the Pacific order, or in the Indonesia, in the Philippines, in the Pacific areas, is about 120-150. So again, it's still lower than the pristine fish biomass. So going directly to the results, this is what we found out that for for the reefs inside marine protected areas, the fish biomass is only about 22 percent of the EM of the Tubataha reef. Tubata uh, Reef National Marine Park, and according to the press also sent by Makana uh, Netal, says here that about 68 percent of reefs inside marine protected areas is still under, is still over exploited, and only in fact uh, 7 percent of the reefs are uh, higher than 50 percent. And for outside, what they expect it's much worse. It's only about 11 percent. So overall, we can still say that the reefs are reefs in the Philippines are generally overfished. And then uh, in this paper, uh, which we have also published in Marine Policy, uh, we interviewed the fishers as to, this based on the, on the knowledge of fishers as to what they think are the causes of fishery decline in the Philippines. So many of them, most of them, about, almost half of them actually, say that it's because there are already too many fishers that the cause of their exploitation. And then destructive fishing, because destructive fishing is still very rampant in many remote areas in the country. For example, in, in Tawi Tawi, the southernmost part of the Philippines, uh, about in, in, in remote areas also in Tawi Tawi, not in the, near the capital or the Bongo, uh, dynamite fishing could reach up to, uh, to 300 plus per day to get here. So that's very huge. And this is consistent with the workshop that we conducted with experts in the Philippines, uh, which we have published in, in the Philippine State of the Coral Triangle Report. So, accordingly, uh, based on the, on the studies that we conducted, this is more like uh, the synthesis already. Uh, this, is, this shows the, like, the trends over the five, last five decades in the country. Like the catch said, catch per unit effort has really drastically decline through time. But however, in terms of total cash, I put it still, uh, it's still higher. The, the fishers are still getting income from, from fishing. Um, but that's because uh, there have been adjustment in fishing effort. So like before, fishers would go to the to fish for only about one to two hours and then they can already get a lot. But now they have to spend six to eight hours or even three to five days you know, and go to as far as Kalaya and as far as the Pacific uh, Ocean to get uh, fish. And they have adjusted in terms of fishing gears from a few hundred uh, meters length of gill nets up to thousands kilometers of nets, and then fishing grounds, you know, and then in terms of fishing duration and target species. So because we also ask as to what type of species are you getting now, or the fish that you, you don't, uh, you use not to get you for that now. So that's the sad reality about uh, fishing. So generally, uh, in order to address overfishing, uh, that's a huge challenge. But obviously, one that we can urgently 
I think we should really urgently address is to eradicate destructive or illegal fishing activities. Yeah. We have we have the maritime uh, there, but it can help us. And then elevate fishing pressure. But then we have to consider these uh, these factors. One is behavioral fishers because the Philippines is an archipelagic country and fishing is a full part of the culture. So it's not just easy to say or to convince fishers to get out of, of fishing. And then poverty and lack of alternative options. So if you if you plan to reduce fishing effort, then maybe we can we should have them find uh, alternative source of income. And then uh, there are too many potential fishers displaced, then limited funds and poor uh, governance. That's actually uh, one of the our biggest challenges. And then we have also to address not just ecological, uh, but also social and fishing effort. So maybe we need to redesign our very protected areas, or may improve management, size, and we have to look at that because our study was just uh, like looking at the marimas inside and outside. We have to really not look as to which MPs uh, are working and which MPs uh, did not work. And then uh, protect entire inhabited reefs. So we don't have uh, enough data to support this. But accordingly, reef fishes do not cross the deep, deep ocean. They tend to stay in the reef in the island. So in many cases in the country, uh, we have like small marine protected areas about 10, 20 hectares, and then the uh, adjacent reefs are actually overfished because there are so many people uh, living in the islands, for example. And in one case in, in Bohol, we have a marine protected area, and then in the, just adjacent to it is in Paklat, in fish coral, and then there are also many fish corals. In there. So, fish, and as Mom uh, Annette mentioned, uh, fish do not have like but they, they, they cross, I don't know, they do not have, like, they are not enclosed in marine protected areas. They move uh, in and out of marine protected areas. And then uh, protect healthier and ecological important reefs, establish MPA networks, which are what we are doing now. And then strict enforcement of MPAs. Uh, there is this study, uh, I forgot, uh, in 2015, that many of the MPAs, in fact, about 80 or to 70 percent of the MPAs did not actually passed the implementation stage because they had a big scores of scoring of, of MPA management. And then uh, because most of the LGO are dependent on the support of, 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 of funding from NGOs, from academia, so without these supports, the LGO cannot actually sustain the, the, the management. And then uh, we have also programs like like good programs. Uh, for example, the famous one was the CCT or the cash conditional transfer. So maybe we could put in, in, uh, in the, the condition in terms of money stewardship. Because for now we're there and they are considering health of education and all and then etc. I think I so I'd like to thank this uh, most of these papers were actually part of my dissertation yet, so I'd like to I can acknowledge it for this contribution next time. So thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, I think it puts on uh, the context of finding Nemo and finding Dory quite different scenario in the Philippines. Might be a different ending. Uh, uh, questions for Dr. Bolivar? For Richard? Richard is from MSU Tawi Tawi. College of Technology and Oceanography. Most of these papers I did it when I was still with the main science institute, as a PhD student and research assistant. Yes, Mom, thank you. Are you, go, are, are you doing in Tawi Tawi, especially in terms of like conservation, protection, and education of the people? Because we are all concerned, definitely in conserving our resources. 
Yes, uh, thank you for asking. Mom. Actually, when I uh, returned, returned to the because I'm from Batavia. Actually, I, I, I became more focused on, on just how it happened. Uh, but I, I spent all my energy, <laughs> my resources uh, in Tawi Tawi. And then when I came in, uh, Ecofish and the Fish Project uh, have already supported some of the FTAs. But then Ecofish ended in 2016 or 2017. And that's where we, uh, we came in as an institution, MSU CPR. So we provided support, technical support to the LGU local government unit. And then we have also uh, conducted IEC among the high school students and the youth in general. And then uh, about our programs, we're asking about that. And then we are also hosting a radio program in MSU. Uh, we talk about conservation. Uh, and then we, we, we help the LGUs in, in crafting uh, uh, proposals. Huh? And one of, I think, that I should mention here, the biggest achievement so far that we did is when we, when we got the project with the late Mount Gina Lopez, uh, we used our, our MPAs as a, in, the, in the proposal because we said that uh, the, the LGUs and the community have been protecting the marine protected area, but there has not been much uh, benefit to the, to the, to the, the Bantay Daga and to the community because and so we got that uh, the project and then Ms. Gina helped us. One is uh, we, she showed uh, through the Gila Irish program the, you know, the, the beautiful, how beautiful Tawi Tawi is. <laughs> how beautiful Tawi Tawi is. And that actually really boosted tourism. There are already many uh, tourists coming in. And then from that, uh, we got <coughs> partnership with, with, with the dog. It's a uh, development, organic product development. Also, we have actually uh, developed uh, three uh, enterprises. One is for the organic product, and then the other one is for the home stay training because there are a lot of mansion big houses in Sibunu. Uh, so they are now accepting tourists. And then uh, the other one is the bomb bikes. We have uh, uh, developed also partnership partnership with, with the one in Chamuros, they, 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 they developed these uh, bamboo bikes for ecotourism. So they have donated about 20 bikes um, well, which can be used uh, for tourism, biking in, in Simuno. And then uh, with Tongben also, the owner of, uh, founder of Dive Pacifica, so he's helping us now uh, establishing a dive site for, that's for uh, tourism. And in fact, uh, because of those help and because of the also earlier uh, initiatives and efforts of the community, uh, the, the that marine protected area actually got into in, in, uh, it's now among the top ten finalists for the best MPA in the country. Uh, so para Elmer. In fact, uh, this Tuesday, uh, the, the final judging for the best MPA will be held in, in Quezon City, and that entry that MPA among the top 10 and, and based on my experience with, uh, with MPAs, I think uh, we got a chance to at least get into that top three. <laughs> because uh, looking at the, I call it the ecological, social, economic, and the governance, I think uh, we really have a chance. <laughs>